Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name's David and this is a Rubik's Cube. All right, so this is not actually a Rubik's Cube because that would imply uh, it was a Rubik's brand. So that's a weird thing, right? We call this the Rubik's Cube because it was something he invented. However, there's lots of cubes like this on the market. We'll call it a three by three. There's lots of three by three cubes on the market and everyone has their favorites. This right here is the RD Cube, the Rubik's Dream from Henry Harrius. Now I've reviewed Rubik's Dream, I've reviewed Rubik's Dream 360. Sometimes when we get these effects that come with something that's, we'll call it normal, uh, we always ask, well, how do I get another one? You know, I got one or I got two with mine, but I'd like to get more. Some of you guys got uh, cube three from Stephen Brundage and people are like, I like that cube. I want to get more. Like, how do I get more? Well, uh, Henry Harris has released the RD cube, the cube that comes with Rubik's Dream. And you can buy it for $10 at your favorite magic retail store. I got mine from penguinmagic.com. So I want to take a little bit of time and look at this and then maybe compare it to some other cubes. But first, let's talk a little bit. All right, so you may not know this, but I actually teach a magic class to little kids, elementary school kids. I teach it once a year. It's kind of like an elective they do at their school and they bring me in and my class size is like eight kids, right? They're the eight kids in the whole school that wanted to learn magic tricks. And so I do that. And at the very beginning of the class, I tell them you're not in magic class. You're actually in a puzzle class. And it's true. I always try to teach first that magic tricks are puzzles. And you've probably seen some other magicians on YouTube that are really into puzzles and they always review puzzles and you're like, why do they always keep talking about puzzles? Well, because a magician, it should be a person that likes puzzles because that's what magic tricks are. Think about it. You know how to do a magic trick and somebody else doesn't. And to them, it looks like magic. Well, you know a puzzle and you know how to solve it. You know how the puzzle's end goes. You know how to get to the end. And because the other person's never studied that puzzle or learned it, th to them it looks like magic. And that's really all magic tricks are. It's a puzzle to solve. You watch it on TV, you watch your favorite magician or cardist to do something, and you're like, how did they do that? And then you try to figure it out. It's a puzzle that you need to solve. So I've always liked puzzles, but then my magic interest has also led me to card games. And you've seen me review card games as well. And so I like board games, I like card games. You know, you'll often see me playing Kill Dr. Lucky or Exploding Kittens or Dice Masters or Unstable Unicorns. Like, I like all that kind of weird stuff. But it just got me to thinking that a lot of my audience is magicians and also people that are into cards. And I would just offer that the Rubik's Cube, okay, the three by three cube has a lot in common with the deck of cards. And I'll give you a for instance. First of all, there's a new deck order, right? There is a new deck order. You get out of the box and maybe just like some of you with cards, you're like, oh, I don't want to get it out of new deck order. And when you get your cube finally back in new deck order, you're like, ah, it's back in new deck order. Right? You can also shuffle a cube, right? You can shuffle it and it's shuffled and you could show it to your audience and say, this is shuffled, right? And you have a shuffled state. You could also put your cube in a deck stack. Okay, you could put your cube in a memorized stack. This is a stack that you learn on uh, Rubik's Stream. And uh, this is the stack I go to because it's the one I learned from Henry Harrius, right? But it's a memorized stack, so you know exactly how to get out of this and how to get it back to new cube order. You can also do false shuffles with a cube. And I said in my last video, really any memorized sequence, if you do it enough times, will return you to your original starting position. The cubes are cyclical, so anything you do as a repeated pattern over and over and over again, eventually it'll end up solving itself. So eventually you wanna get down to a false shuffle that you can do, you know, in six moves, let's say. So a magician would get into a deck stack that they knew how to get out of, and then you would do a couple of false shuffles after that to make it look like it's really mixed. But in re actuality, you're retaining your deck stack so that you can get back out of it in a flash. And for you guys that are into cardistry and flourishing, that carries over to Rubik's Cubes as well. Uh, for one, there's all kinds of finger tricks and flourishes that you can do with cubes that all involve finger strength and you know, uh, muscle memory, just like uh, cardistry does. Plus, in cardistry, you guys love to collect different decks 
objects in different colors. Rubik's cubes are the same things. There's lots of brands out there, lots of names out there, uh, special stickers and special shapes. Uh, it's a big, huge collectible uh, item as well. So lots of things I think from cards carry over to Rubik's cubes. And I, I can see those two different communities maybe meeting in the middle and certainly having some crossover. And so if you've been kind of looking at Rubik's cubes and thinking, well, I don't know if I'd get into this, maybe you might wanna check it out. All right, so I brought three cubes with me from my collection and I was just gonna compare one for one, all right? So this is the RD cube. This is the RD cube from Henry Harris. It has silent movement. Uh, you can tighten and loosen this depending on what you feel like. It has removable side panels. The middles pop out so that you can add a special something that will enable you to do Rubik's Dream. Uh, the stickers match, of course, uh, the Rubik's Dream, but I think they're super duper close to the actual Rubik's cube that you buy in the store. And that's something that I think is important. Uh, people always ask me like what deck I use to do magic. I always use Riderbacks. I use red Riderbacks 808s because I don't want uh, my cards to distract my audience. I want them to think this is a normal deck of cards. And so if you have a Rubik's Cube and you're doing Rubik's Cube magic, you know, I, I say flourish all day long with fun, with fun cubes. But if you're going to do magic, you should have a cube that your spectators recognize and they're going to say that's not a trick cube. Like you want something that looks like a Rubik's Cube. And for 10 bucks, I think it beats a lot of the prices of some of the more higher end cubes that are out there on the market. Here's the cube that comes with cube three, okay? It is a looser cube. I said that in the review I did yesterday. Looser this direction, okay? And uh, it's got really good action on it, but I've said before, like, it, sometimes when you flick it, it doesn't exactly line up, and then you go to, you know, twist and it jams, it locks up on you. But I like it for an everyday cube. People that have tried to find a replacement for this think that this is the Senshu Aurora cube. I think if you're trying to do flourishing and like finger tricks, of course you want a cube that moves fast with your finger response. But I think if you're doing magic, the more important thing is you want a cube that is silent. When you're covering it and supposedly not doing anything and you're turning it, you want uh, there to be no noise. You don't want your spectator to know that you're turning it secretly behind your hand. And then lastly, uh, this is my cube that I got off eBay. I think it's called the Yuxin 3x3. Um, it was super duper cheap, came from China. Um, it's really loud, or you can hear it from here, right? And uh, uh, it's not as loose as the Cube 3, um, but it's really squeaky too. Like you can hear like all the springs inside of it. So those, and those are just like a few that I brought as an example. Uh, I'm sure you have your favorites. Ever since I've started doing these Rubik's Cube videos, people have always wanted to chime in and let me know like what some better cubes are. Uh, if you're looking for a good inexpensive cube, uh, I would recommend the Dian Zanchi. If you want like a middle of the road pricing, uh, the Mayu Weilong is good. And if you want an expensive one, the GANS 356 ARS is really good. Let us know in the comment section below which cube you like. If I didn't mention your favorite or if you just know like two or three others that you think are either affordable or super expensive but awesome, uh, l let's hear from you. Uh, mention your favorite cubes down in the comments below. And if you're looking for a website to go to uh, just to check out other cubes or maybe be a part of a cube community, I want to thank Brian James for recommending thecubicle.us. All right, so that's pretty much everything I can say about the RD Cube from Henry Harris, available right now at your favorite magic retailer for about $10. It's a good replacement cube for your cube magic tricks, especially if you already do Rubik's Dream or Rubik's Dream 360. Like I said, I got mine at penguinmagic.com, and I would suggest you head there as well. Thanks. Bye.